Pierre, why don't you do a proper introduction for yourself? <clears throat> um, so I'm one of the co-founders of Notpla. We're a sustainable packaging startup uh, based in London as well, developing uh, alternatives to single-use plastic using seaweed and plants. Uh, and we've uh, very much kind of like uh, worked and kind of like grown uh, like alongside uh, you guys uh, at Plumo for the past few years. So it's been really interesting to see the space change, to see everything kind of like uh, evolve in the right direction. How did it all start? And uh, tell us, take us back to the early days. Um, initially, it was more of a design kind of like exploration with uh, natural materials. We were excited about creating a man-made fruit. How could nature package uh, water or uh, different kind of liquids and eventually stumbled upon seaweed, uh, mainly through the uh, spherification process, which is used for making fake caviar. So lots of uh, messing around in the kitchen, uh, not much kind of like high-tech gear at the beginning. Uh, what was that scale up like from a sort of manufacturing side of things? It tends to be the, the, the valley of death for material startup where you've got a pretty great kind of like demo that you make kind of like uh, in, in the lab, but you can't really find a manufacturing process that scales with you. And so uh, that took a lot of uh, um, convincing uh, industrial partners to just open their doors and try to kind of like work with you on making things work in existing industrial um, like machines, because that's the fastest way to scale up. Having followed very closely what you guys have done, you, you've really identified a very scalable manufacturing process and struck some of those key partnerships that really allow you to immediately have some kind of manufacturing capacity. So that's, that's, that's one of the big differentiation points between the products that stay at uni and the ones that actually have an impact in the in the world. You guys actually have a range of different products now. Can you explain a little bit more about where you're at today and the kind of products you're looking at? For sure. Um, we, we started with this almost like provocation. If, if, uh, if X or Y content was a fruit, what kind of fruit would it be? Um, so Oho, this first product that we made, these little bubbles that we use for marathons, festivals, were kind of like a very differentiated uh, content. So we realized that it was just a platform that we were creating. If we could find a way to make seaweed do X, Y, Z for this application, probably there was some other ways that we could use it for re removing some other type of single-use plastic. So the second product, which is now the one that is probably like the most at scale, is our takeaway boxes. Uh, it, they are made of cardboard coated with our seaweed. Uh, the coating is necessary in this industry to hold the food because otherwise things just kind of like disintegrate in your hands. And typically it's made with plastic and it's exactly what you were describing um, as innovators we've got to anchor one or two of those things and make them kind of like work really well to prove that um, there is a huge potential for them but th this gives us a leading edge against any other kind of like um, like incumbent uh, packaging company for yourselves as a company where do you guys want to take this so we see a huge opportunity for um, consumption on the go. This is kind of the sweet spot for seaweed. I think um, there is like probably like about a third of the single-use plastic used in packaging that we could tackle with some of those materials like seaweed. Single-use plastics is something we need to solve yesterday. And so there is no time to lose. And luckily, there is a lot more kind of like um, appetite from the investor community on investing on those solutions that not only kind of like make sense from a like an economical perspective, but also have like a piece of legacy of like, we are the ones changing this industry for the better. And, and we need support from people who really believe in that as well. As a material innovator, creating a new sustainable product, what are your kind of top tips for the next stage? I think all the things that in a way you guys are doing, um, making partnerships, strong, deep partnerships with manufacturing uh, partners is very important. If we don't have to create new factories and new kind of like uh, machines from scratch, but we can we have so much impact so much faster. Um, not being afraid of also challenging the status quo. Sometimes you need new machines. Sometimes you need to kind of like reinvent uh, like the material. And and we've surrounded ourselves with some of the like experts in this field. The, the first one to come in and kind of like uh, swoosh all of these people in their team is the one that is um, like most successful as well. So I think that being a pioneer in that front is is uh, is quite important. All right, uh, so let me get in the zone. <laughs> and how long do you want the chat to be? I think we should try and cap it. And I mean, let's see what we go, but let's try and cap it at 10 minutes because I just think who the hell's listening to more than 10 minutes, you know? <laughs>